guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am filming eight products that basically I bought the wrong shade. Now I'm definitely a serial offender in this category because I do a lot of online shopping when it comes to makeup and usually if you guys are seasoned veteran online shoppers like I am, you would have definitely accumulated some products that are the wrong shade for you and with my skin tone since it varies so much from season to season and I swear I'm still trying to figure out if I'm a cool undertone I'm pretty sure I'm a cool undertone because if you can see on my arm here you can definitely see my blue veins but since I am tan I always trick myself into thinking I need to buy warm tone products I feel like I've gotten better as I've gotten more experience, but there's definitely some things I am guilty of buying in the wrong shades. And I only could think of eight as I was brainstorming this video, but if you guys think of anything else, definitely hit me up in the comments and we can chat down there. So without further blabbering, let's get into it. So my first product that I definitely bought in the wrong shade was one of the cover effects blush like highlighter blush things those duos so I had bought two shades originally and they did work for my skin tone but everyone was raving about the shade I think it's called soft peach everyone was raving about the shade and I looked at it in the Sephora app as well as on Ulta and I was like I think that works with my skin tone I think it should work I think it should work and I hummed and I hawed and then during one of the sales, I think it was an Alta 20% off or something like that, I finally bought Soft Peach and when I got it, in the mail I was like, oh my goodness, like what was I thinking? And I think I even used it in a video just to show my tan subscribers what a bad option <laughs> that particular product purchase was. So I had to return it because I was never gonna use it. It was way too light for me, way, way too light for me. And so that is product number one. That was like one that came to mind right away was the Cover FX blush in Soft Peach. So number two is the Dior Backstage Foundation. Now I actually have this foundation with me and I bought this in the shade 4.5W. Now looking at it, it probably doesn't look that dark. I don't know if it's the way the bottle is like frosted. It is a plastic bottle, but it is frosted and I really like this formula, but this shade is so dark. Oh my gosh, I like, can you guys see that? I just like put a little bit, look at that. It's so dark on me. I can maybe wear it like in the summertime, but like right now, if I wear this, it looks like I'm trying to alter my skin tone because it's significantly darker and I totally regret buying it in this shade because I can't wear it unless I'm like super tan and who knows when we'll go out again, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I definitely regret it and it's so hard again to purchase foundations online especially and there's definitely been so many foundations I have screwed up on and bought the wrong shade but the Dior one is one I have still with me because I can't bring myself to part with it. I just keep telling myself I'm gonna use it when I get tan and the other one that I really messed up on was the ABH foundation. Now, I don't have that foundation with me because I ended up decluttering it because again, I bought the wrong shade. Like I said, when it comes to my skin tone, I always tend to gravitate towards like the tan um, warm shades or the tan, yeah, tan warm is usually what the description will say and so I think that's like my color and then when I see it in person, no, it's not my color at all. I'm definitely more of like a neutral, cool tone, undertone. So it's definitely something I've learned over the years, but totally messed up with the ABH foundation as well. I don't remember off the top of my head what shade I bought, but I'll try and look it up and leave it for you guys over here. But that was a freaking disaster. Plus I hated that foundation anyway. And look at the Dior, I swear it like oxidizes too because it doesn't look as dark but it oxidizes after you've worn it for some time so yeah that color on my face does not fly right now <laughs> so those are two foundation mistakes i've made and 
purchases I made of the wrong color. The next one honestly made me so sad. This is the Huda Beauty Brontour and again, too late to return this. I bought this in the shade medium because I was like, oh yeah, like once I blend it, it'll lighten up. No, it's like way too dark. Like, what was I thinking? Like, it's, no, it's like way too dark. It's like way, way, way too dark. And so... I've learned my lesson that just because it says medium doesn't mean that I need to buy it. This could definitely work for somebody with a little bit deeper of a skin tone and maybe I'll try it again this summer but I'm pretty sure that's the wrong shade and I just need to part with it but I spend my hard earned money on it so I haven't bought myself to like get rid of it yet. I've used it maybe two to three times tops and I deeply regret purchasing it because it's totally the wrong shade for my skin tone. Okay, so the next thing I picked up in the wrong shade was the Fenty Beauty Bronzer. So originally, I bought it in a shade called um, Bahayan Giel. I don't know how to say it. I'll put it right here, but it's basically described as a tan with a warm undertone which makes sense, right? I'm tan with a warm undertone. It did not work for me. It was very red toned and no, it was so bad. Luckily, I realized it soon enough that I could bring it to the store and exchange it and I ended up picking it up in Caramel Cutie, which is a tan to deep with neutral undertones. The key here is neutral. I need to learn that neutral is what works for me. I can't do warm shades. I need to do things that have the word neutral in them. So that bronzer works way better for me. I still don't love the formula of this, but the shade match was way better. So I'm so happy I was able to fix that mistake I made when I bought the wrong shade. But let me tell you, I've made a lot of a lot of blunders along the way here. So the next one is another bronzer. Are we, is anybody surprised? It is the Morphe Glam Bronze in Trailblazer. This is another one where I'm super guilty of buying the warm bronzer instead of buying just a neutral undertone bronzer. I bought this like very reddish medium bronze and it just looks so red on me when I put this on my face. I just don't love the look and I'm so bummed. Luckily this one was $19 but it felt like I bought the bronzer. I tried it. By the time I realized it we were all in quarantine and I'm pretty sure it's too late to return it which is such a bummer. I'm hoping I can whip this out in the summertime when I'm tan and hopefully I can get some use out of it but I am pretty bummed that I spent the money and bought the wrong shade. The next thing, I don't have these items on me, but I have bought two blushes from Charlotte Tilbury just because I've heard so many tan skin women rave about the blushes. So I picked out the shades Sex on Fire and Pillow Talk. I bought Sex on Fire first and it was the dustiest blush I've ever tried. I intensely regretted spending $40 on that blush and then I made an even bigger mistake and picked up Pillow Talk, which now she has a Pillow Talk Intense, so maybe that will work with my skin tone, but the regular Pillow Talk is way too light and I was so happy I was able to declutter those blushes to somebody else. Hopefully they're getting much better use out of them than I am, but oh, that was a very costly mistake when it came to blushes and pretty much now I just won't really buy Charlotte Tilbury face products unless I get to like see them and swatch them in person because her shade range, I'm a little suspicious. I've definitely bought some foundations from her that I've just been like in between and it's just not worth the heavy price tag to be very honest. I've definitely also made the same mistake with Tom Ford's bronzer. Back in the day when I hit like a thousand subscribers or something, I purchased one of the Tom Ford Soleil bronzers and I can't remember what shade I bought but it was very expensive. It came in like a $75 size and if you go back and watch some of my older videos, if you're that determined, you might be able to spot it but that was a huge mistake. I definitely regretted buying Tom Ford bronzer at that point but you know everybody was talking about how good the products were and I was really curious so I've definitely done that with expensive stuff. I also did it with the Chanel Tan de Soleil Chanel. It's their cream bronzer that everyone talks about as well. It's a $50 bronzer so it's like a pretty acceptable 
product, you know, for being so luxury. Like Chanel is like as bougie as it gets when it comes to like the different fashion houses. So I was like, oh, let me own something Chanel. And then it was basically my skin tone. <laughs> like it was so light. And I, again, bought the wrong shade. Well, there's only one shade, so it's not really my fault. But yeah, I don't really understand why Chanel won't expand their shade range. But I've definitely owned it and definitely it does not work for me. I have to say the same thing about Hoola too. So if you are my skin tone, I would recommend staying away from Hoola. I know they did like a Hoola Caramel and like another deep shade, so those may work. I haven't really felt the need to try Hoola Bronzer. Even though it's like a cult favorite, I feel like I found so many other brands that I would rather support. So. Not planning on going back to Benefit, but just so you guys know, if you are new to the beauty space and you're finding this video, be careful of Hoola Bronzer because it's pretty light and a lot of people use it, so it kind of makes you think like, oh, I can use it, but I would definitely recommend going in store and swatching it. Okay, so the last thing I bought, and I don't think this one was meant for me, is the highlighter by Ofra and Samantha March. So this is the original. I did not get this in PR. This one I purchased myself and I really, 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 really want to tell you guys that this is my personal opinion. This has nothing to do with the creator or the brand or anything like that. But personally for me, this is very icy and I prefer my highlights right now to look just like more like lit from within versus like sitting on top of my skin. So if I wear a highlighter like this, you'll kind of see the color on my face, whereas I like it to look like more blended. So I would caution you if you are my skin tone or deeper. I know some people love to wear like a bam stripe of highlighter and I'm just giving you guys my opinion. So that's my take on that. And then the very last product that I definitely felt like was not meant for me, was the wrong shade, was the creepy cute palette from Strobe Cosmetics, now known as Shroud Cosmetics. So I, this palette was a pioneer. Let me tell you, it was before its time. I think it was one of the first pastel palettes that ever launched and all my indie loving beauty guru friends were freaking out about it. So of course I was like, oh, let me get that. <laughs> and so I did and let me tell you, I did not know what I was doing when I originally posted my video on the Strobe Cosmetics Creepy Cute palette. I keep meaning to go back and use it, but I'm on such a like neutral palette kick right now that I haven't made the time for it because I'm so busy like playing with fun neutral palettes. But I really, really want to go back because now I'm armed with a white base. I definitely used to be one of those people that was like, you know what, fuck pastels, like I don't have time to put a white base on to make an eyeshadow work for me, but now I know that it's okay and that I can I can put some effort in to create an, a look, and so I'm really, really excited. I wanna go back and use the Creepy Cute palette, but this is just a word of caution to any of my tan friends out there. If you are wanting to try pastels, either prepare for it to be really light so you'll have like a watercolor look, if you want them to appear very pigmented and true to color, like the shade in the pan, you probably want to use a white base. That's just my way of making it work. I know some people are like me and they don't want to go through the effort and that's totally fine, but maybe then you want to steer clear of pastels just so you don't waste money buying something you're never going to use. So anyway, that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed my I started with eight products, but I'm pretty sure I talked about more, but my products that I bought that probably weren't the right shade for me. Let me know what you picked up that was the wrong shade for you. I would love to talk to you guys in my comment section. And if you guys want to keep watching my videos, I'll link some videos for you to check out here at the end. See you in the next one. Bye guys.